a love of family and tradition has this architect really gushing. This is not some well-executed project. It's more a labor of love that's just come over time. This cottage owner in Muskoka is extra sweet on his all-season, all-Canadian retreat. Our family enjoys a little bit of wine, but we enjoy much more the uh, finished product of uh, the Muskoka Gold. Some people have cottages, other people have compounds. This is our retreat! That would be the Flaherty's. Their clan is 35 members strong and lucky owners of four dwellings here on Kawagama Lake. It's the biggest lake in Halliburton County that you've never heard of. Hi, I'm Mark. I'm Joanne, and this is our retreat. <laughs> This is a little bit of an, a hidden gem. Nobody seems to know where Kawagama is, so this suited us just fine. It's absolutely beautiful over here. This is Algonquin Highlands, so it's got quite hilly, rugged terrain. If anyone can tame it, it's Joanne. The architect and her five siblings grew up vacationing here. When things got too cozy at her folks' place, she flew the coop. First, she built her place, then helped brother Dave, and Sister Marianne build here. It seems the effect just kind of multiplied. Having four cottages on this lake is handy when there are 35 people to entertain. Family reunions happen a lot here in the summer. On this weekend, there are 26 people. Meet the parents, Bernie and Chris. Next is Dave and his daughter, Sheila. Here's Joanne and Mark with their kids and some friends. And then we have Mary Ann and her husband Dave with their kids and some friends as well. Do you have that? Because there's a test later. My oldest brother Paul is in the Yukon and he has four children. My brother David has three, I have five. And then my brother John has four. My sister Mary Ann has four and my youngest brother, Michael, will have one, hopefully, by the end of this weekend. Either there's something in that water, or this clan likes large broods. Yes, that's why we have separate cottages. <laughs> no matter how far they roam, the family always seems to find their way back. I'm Chris. I'm Bernie, and this is our retreat. This is the homestead cottage where Chris and Bernie raised their six kids. They bought the land back in 1960. We actually didn't do anything with it. We didn't do anything with it, but we camped on it. I probably was maybe six or seven when we first started coming up camping, and my parents would rent a boat out of the marina, and we'd head across the lake because it was boat access only way back then. One of the ridiculous things about it, though, is we used to rent this little old open boat. <laughs> And when you think about it now, you would never consider doing that with six children and all our camping gear. I think it was 73 that we actually built the cottage. We got this plan from a lumber place and then I recreated it. I changed all the windows and the dimensions and suited it to fit us with six children and it worked. Did it ever. This simple open concept plan sheltered the family for more than three decades. And it's still going strong. Joanne's brother, John, didn't build his own. His family stays here at the homestead with Chris and Bernie. When the kids were little and there weren't other cottages, you only got one or two weeks that you got to come up in the summer. And now with there being three other cottages, it gives that opportunity for more of the family to be up here at the same time, so you get to spend more time with everybody. I love it. I like the cottage is the one place where you go and you know people are always going to be here, and it's like the one common like gathering ground for our entire family. Yeah. We like to go like water skiing lots, too, lots water skiing. and tubing and the falls and the cliffs. Wide open spaces are among the great features of the place, but inside things got a little close for comfort. We ran out of room, plain and simply. <laughs> 
too many. Too many type A personalities. Grandma, you gonna go cliff jumping? Too many kids. But you just get to the point where it's too many people under one roof. So, somebody needed to build another roof. Joanne and Dan stepped up, and after seven years of construction, this cottage is the result. We wanted to build our own cottage, and one thing that was extremely important to us was that we taught the kids work ethic and how to hammer a nail, how to mix cement, how to fix things. We were adamant that we were going to take a number of years to do it versus just write a check and have contractors come in and just do it. Turns out there were life lessons all around. And there were a few years of grumbling. We can't make it sound like it was all rosy. They complained like crazy but at times along the way. And we said, someday you'll appreciate this. This is not some well-executed project. It's more a labor of love that's just come over time. They call their place Montauk. In Algonquin, that means meeting place. But do the Algonquin have a word for awesome? We are in the living room. Basically just one large room. What Mark and I wanted was for this to be simple, kind of a treehouse feeling. Everything in here is leftover furniture from our first house, from my parents, whoever we begged, borrowed and stole from. There's two bedrooms up, two bedrooms down, a bathroom upstairs, a bathroom downstairs. My kitchen is my favorite spot and I love that it's tucked back a bit because it's crazy in here. We're putting meals together. We did the open pantry with all the food there. All the shelves are just piled everywhere with glass cupboards so that everybody who's in here knows where to find everything. The posts we bought off are lumberjack. They were just cut pine logs, so Mark and the boys floated them over to the cottage, hauled them up the hill, and then they used nads and they scraped all the bark off. The kids now finally can start to appreciate the effort that they put into it, and it means so much more to them, and they're proud to show it off to their friends, too. It means something to them. So as they start to have families of their own, I think that uh, the blood and sweat they put into it will pay off big time. Joanne's brother Dave watched his sister's extraordinary seven-year project unfold. Right away, he knew what he wanted and what he didn't. The difference would be she was inside the fortress walls and she was building the palace and mine was the little shack outside the wall, actually. Kawagama Lake is the best kept secret in the Halliburton Highlands of Ontario. It's also home to one family with four cottages. Joanne Campbell is an architect and the first member of the family to break away and build her own place. Her brother Dave and her sister Marianne followed suit. All building within three kilometers of mom and dad. Hi, I'm Dave and this is my retreat. Dave bought an old cottage, then tore it down, and built one he likes better. He even did a lot of the work his very own self. This weekend, he's sharing it with daughter Sheila. We knew this area. We knew this particular piece of property when it came up for sale. Dave and sister Joanne share a deep love of the area. Much better. But differ dramatically in how they approach their own places. The difference would be she was inside the fortress walls and she was building a palace and mine was the little shack outside the wall actually so i was able to build mine quite quickly this is it this is our place this is on the footprint of the old cabin that was here these logs all came from my dad's farm the uh the spindles on the staircase were the tops of the pine trees it's two bedrooms, uh, one larger bedroom upstairs. The fireplace, actually my mom's cousin, Ronnie, who is in his late 80s, helped uh, help us build that. And those stones came from all around the property. We have a regatta on this lake on the long weekend in August. And generally the family's done okay. As you'll see them in all the cottages, actually. Sometimes we'll spend a lot of time in any one place and not spend a whole lot of time here. We sort of flock together, too. We happen to be a family that gets along quite well with each other, which is kind of neat. This group of cottagers have all helped each other along the way. But when it came to building Sister Mary Ann's place, Joanne took a leading role. I designed it. And did, I actually, she was pretty busy with work when they were finishing the cottage, so I ended up buying everything for the inside. She just arrived and it was all done. Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, I'm Mary Ann. 
and this is our retreat. Husband Dave, not to be confused with Brother Dave, is married to Mary Ann, Joanne's sister. Got it? Well, he wasn't sure exactly what he wanted in the cottage until his sister-in-law, Joanne, told him exactly what he wanted. When the property came up for sale, she gave us a call and said, if you guys don't buy it, I'm buying it. <laughs> and so she already had a vision of what was to be on the property. I didn't have that same vision at first. Wasn't sure we were really wanted to get into this spot, but she was right. It turned out really well. Lesson learned. So as you can see, it's a timber frame cottage, um, post and beam, Joanne's design. The flooring is all from the trees that were taken down on the property, so it was, it was nice that way. This is our fireplace, which Mary Ann, Brittany, and Jenna spent the whole summer picking stones, making sure there was enough stones here. 2,000 stones. We picked them all and counted them all. The lovely deer was from Joanne. We were on our way up here for the project, had, had run into the deer, and, and then they ended up for, as a present for us, an opening cottage present. They had the head mounted, and there, there it sits. We have two bedrooms upstairs, and so the boys are on one side, the girls are on the other side, so it works out quite well. For us, this is the gathering place, you know. We, uh, we've been down in Boston for five years now, and very rarely do we go back to where our parents are. Instead, we come here, and everybody meets here, and we all gather here, and this is our place. Could the word she's looking for be Montauk? For Joanne, the first and last word is always family. For me, the best part of this is, is being close to my family. That's what's really important to me. And as I say, we can, everybody can go about their lives, busy as can be, and you come up here and it's just that chance to connect. And so I really feel fortunate for our kids and my nieces and nephews that they've all grown up in this extended family. They all seem to be on the same page, really. And I think that they will do a very good job of carrying it on. And I just hope that they don't forget where it all comes from. <laughs> oh, yeah. Mwah. An ever-growing family, too. Vancouver brother Paul had a baby by the end of the weekend. That's 36 family members. Time to add another chair to the campfire. That is so sweet. And so is this all-season cottage. And its golden offerings come springtime. maple syrup time. I love being with my dad doing that. So that's our springtime uh, activity. Hi, I'm Barry and this is our retreat. Whether it's summer or winter, something sweet is always cooking at this Four Season Cottage. you'll find this sugar shack in Muskoka, two hours north of Toronto. It is a four season cottage. So right now it's maple syrup time. My father actually is in the sugar shack enjoying himself uh, with the fire today. And uh, it's a hobby. I love being with my dad doing that. And uh, so that's our springtime uh, activity. Summer is spectacular. The lake, the islands, we have three girls and they love the water sports. The fall, we always have uh, Jean's family up here for Thanksgiving. In the winter, we uh, have snowmobile trails in the proximity that can go for hundreds and thousands of kilometers, believe it or not. And we take full advantage of all four seasons. When people think Muskoka, they think summer. This cottage design spans four seasons. You might say this couple took a broad perspective. We really wanted a point of land that we could look out over the lake and you can see the lake from every window, every room, you can see the lake and that's beautiful. And I'll tell you, other than the fact that it's stone and pine and there is no drywall in the place, everything is wood, it doesn't look anything like what we had envisaged to start with, but we just absolutely love it. Right now, we're in the entertainment room, and this is uh, where we tend to spend a lot of time, and our children and their friends spend a whole lot of time in here. 
You can see the pool table and we've got a shuffle board. It's big enough to be able to host 25 people in here. So, you have the visitors, you have all the party trappings, what else is hanging around here? The canoe that we have hanging here, it's Birch Bark Canoe. And it's pretty special as well, and the re where it came from, there was a uh, college in North Bay, Aboriginal College, and this was the very first canoe that they built, and it hung in the foyer of the college. Unfortunately, college is no longer there, and so that meant that the canoe became available and, uh, and we ended up with it. Nice touch, Barry. Of course, like at every good party, we all end up in the kitchen. We've also built a large kitchen with a big island. And because if, if you're familiar with uh, your family, I'm sure everybody congregates in the kitchen. And we love that. And we, you know what we really enjoy about that? When we invite friends or family up, they all want to get involved. So we all take a little part of making the meal. Our great room has a beautiful Rumford fireplace, and I love that fireplace. We have it going every day, all four seasons. I spend a fair amount of time working here as well, and I have an office, uh, and the office really wanted it to make me feel as though I wanted to do work. And it's got the pine, and it's got a fireplace in it, and it overlooks the lake. And I, while I may not be the most creative person, that's where I aspire to get my best thoughts for certain. But all work and no play makes Barry a dull boy. Time to liven things up in the wine cellar. As you can see, our family enjoys a little bit of wine, but we enjoy much more the uh, finished product of uh, the Muskoka Gold. I'll share with you the story behind the gold. When we started, we did it over in the driveway, and what we found was Dad was getting wet and cold because it was raining. Right, most of the time. <laughs> So that didn't work so well, so the next year we built the uh, sugar shack. Now we needed something to go collect the sap, so we have the mule. So now we go collect the sap, and you can imagine uh, there were a few dollars that went into preparing for this, and we don't ever expect that we'll break even. <laughs> so, hence, Muskoka Gold. The sideline and syrup makes winter here extra sweet, while the water sports come summertime are icing on the cake. This is our boat house. Of course, the kids uh, enjoy the, the wave runners, uh, particularly on windy days. And my father and I, we enjoy the woody. Maple syrup making at this all-season Muskoka retreat makes springtime golden. But when the thermometer goes up, fun, family, and friends really sweeten up the summers. People ask us, you know, which is your best season? I, I really don't know the answer to that. For me, all seasons are great. But for the summertime, I love it because that's when our friends and family have time for holidays. We're very fortunate. Two of our daughters are working up here in the summertime. So while we're here, they're here. And uh, they bring up friends from time to time. Nothing like friends and family to share your beloved vacation home. And nothing like getting away from it all when the need strikes. Right now we're outside of uh, my shower and I use this shower uh, every morning. I, I run a lot and there's no better place to uh, get cleaned up than outside here. Now we're just coming across the, uh, the front of the cottage and this is Gina, my uh, room here. And we put it down here for a reason. I told you we uh, have a lot of family and friends. They tend to enjoy themselves. So some of the other amenities like the hot tub and the entertainment room are at the complete opposite end of the, the place. And that's for a reason. So this is our Muskoka room. And you know this is one of our favorite rooms in the whole place. And the reason being, we're outside all the time. It's screened in, so we can use it uh, if it's buggy time. Most of the time, though, we've got the screens up and you don't have to worry about it. Double-sided fireplace, it works great in the evening because uh, you can see from the dock in through into the Muskoka room. It's just the little things that, uh, that we really appreciate.
This is uh, the deep water area and it's great for swimming. We uh, spend a lot of time out here. The wonderful thing about the way this property is designed is when it's windy, chances are we wouldn't be spending time out here, we'd be spending it in the boathouse area. The boathouse area will be calm. This is our boathouse and we spend a lot of time here. Of course the kids uh, enjoy the, the wave runners, uh, particularly on windy days. And my father and I, we enjoy the woody. This boat I've had uh, since 2008, plying these lakes and uh, a lot of fun. Fit for all seasons and for all ages, Barry treasures the memories of his cottage retreat, past, present, and future. For us, this property is all about a legacy for family and friends. And it's Gene and my hope and desire that long, long after we're gone, that uh, our kids and their kids are continuing to have the time of their lives up here and to keep the memories alive because that's what it's all about.